Buenos dias! Welcome to another daily devotion. I'm your host today, El Padre, also known as Pastor Jesse and Jesse the Mexican superhero. Welcome to Daily Devotions. If you're new here, our mission as a church is to grow mature disciples. Mature or mature. I'm not sure which is the more proper way to say it. But either way, uh, that's our mission. With that comes the reality that we recognize that in the same way babies mature over time, uh, we as disciples should be maturing over time, that we need to be intentional to not just um, to grow ourselves, but to be listening to what uh, leaders around us pastors and what um you know whatever are, are teaching the apostles teach us the the bible teaches us and then applying that to our lives because ultimately that's what helps us to grow uh so today our chapter is second peter chapter three we're going to be closing up second peter and I know you're excited about this. Yesterday was so amazing talking about false prophets. You just, you, you just want to keep diving into the craziness. And so here we are today, uh, jumping in to Second Peter chapter three. Now, uh, to I don't know if you've ever wondered about this in the early '90s. The American church as a whole, I believe, at, at least for sure, the church that we were a part of, talked a lot about the importance of taking care of the earth, taking care of the things around us. Uh, at the time where I grew up, uh, a lot of the people were from a farming background. And so to them, stewarding the resources, the natural resources you have, uh, the animals you have was an incredibly important aspect of our faith of of following jesus and um since then you've seen sort of like this shift so to speak to where um taking care of the earth uh has become kind of a uh, philosophy that the church doesn't take uh, often. Uh, and so today we're going to talk about uh, global warming. We're going to talk about um, the end of the world, so to speak. Uh, the question is this, um, you know, you see things like uh, the media and, and lots of people will tell you, oh, we have to save the earth. I have to be careful with the way that, that you know, don't buy uh, plastic straws because those get thrown into the ocean and the ocean then, you know, they end up, um, you know, getting stuck in the nostrils of turtles and sharks and killing lots of animals. Um, and so not only that, there's uh, lots of documentaries out there that talk about how uh, the world uh like the coral reefs are starting to disappear because uh those habitats are being polluted and the things the trash that we are disposing of is is what's causing uh that uh that the the animals are dying that the the ecosystem is starting to dissipate because of course uh, we're throwing our trash into the water where it doesn't belong. And so, um, personally, uh, the question then arises, um, you know, you'll hear oftentimes people talking about the importance of switching from fossil fuels, uh, don't frack, uh, stuff like that. The oil is bad. Uh, don't use oil because it creates uh, pollution in the air and then that then is going to deteriorate the ozone layer uh, and therefore uh, we're all going to die we're all going to burn the whole world is going to be encompassed uh, because the polarized caps are melting and uh, california is going to get drowned in the ocean uh, and there's probably going to be a volcano somewhere that erupts because it's overheating 
Uh, and so we, we see lots of these different types of messages that get put out there. The question is, what does the Bible say about all of that stuff? And so today, we're actually going to talk about it from kind of a unique perspective. We're only going to use 2 Peter. Um, and so here we go. 2 Peter 3, verse 10 says this, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. On that day, the heavens will pass away with a loud noise. The elements will burn and be dissolved, and the earth and the works on it will be disclosed. Uh, some of the other translations say that the works will be burned up. Uh, depending on the translation that you use, I'm using the, the Christian Standard Bible. Uh, and so, but basically it's this idea that number one, uh, that the end, uh, the, the, the day of the Lord. So this is talking about when Jesus comes back uh, for the second coming, the day of the Lord will come like a thief. Uh, some of them, the translations will say like a thief in the night because thieves usually come when they think that nobody's home or that nobody's paying attention uh, when it's going to be easiest to steal your stuff. And so uh, the Bible is saying that the Lord is going to come at a time similarly to that when you're not expecting it, when you're not prepared. Um, and so it's going to, there will be this a loud noise. Uh, and then it says the heavens will pass away. It also says the elements will burn and be dissolved. The elements. Uh, that's talking about uh, everything. Uh, like the earth, the the water, the sky, everything that science would call an element, this is referring to, and it's saying that it will be burned and dissolved, and that the earth and the works on it will be disclosed. Meaning that every action that has ever taken place, whether righteous or unrighteous, all of it, is going to be disclosed. Now, I want to keep going because I think this is all important. Um, he, he goes on to say, As you wait for the day of God and hasten its coming, because of that day, the heavens will be dissolved with fire and the elements will melt with heat. But based on his promise, we wait for a new heavens and a new earth where righteousness dwells. So, something to keep in mind is number one, we absolutely believe as Christians that we need to steward what we have. Uh, we, we need to do our best to, to handle the things that God has given us in the most, uh, in the best possible way. Uh, we want it to flourish. Uh, so when it comes to things like pollution, uh, we don't want to do that. So like as Christians, and, and in fact, this is something Pastor Dan does super well um and and we've tried to do with our family where pastor dan one of the things he does is if you're with him and he's walking through a parking lot he just picks up trash anytime he sees trash he picks it up throws it away in a garbage can uh we've done that with, with our kids where we've we've just walked up and down the road uh with our bikes sometimes and we race to the next piece of trash and i'll like be running with the stroller and uh we put the trash in the bag and i have to carry everything uh, but because we believe that we need to steward what it is that we have. We we see in Genesis that God, uh, when he creates the world, he, he leaves man in charge uh, with dominion over the earth, with the intention of his working it, with the intention of his taking care of it and stewarding that, that, that the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. However, it's our job to take care of what is the Lord's. We're, we're just here to manage it for him. Uh, and so with that, we also need to recognize, though, uh, that no matter what you do to prevent global warming, it's still going to come because the earth is going to be destroyed by fire. It's going to be entirely dissolved. It's going to go away forever. Um, and with this particular passage, what he's encouraging you with is that it is, sorry, my phone keeps falling, uh, is that we need to be with the idea and the mindset, especially as Christians, 
that, you know, that we get to look forward to the day where there is a new heavens and a new earth. And so here I have as an illustration, I don't know if you can see this, um, I got here, uh, this is my little earth that I created, a little Mario earth, sorry, Lego, if I've, uh, you know, mistreated your stuff. Uh, but here we have, you know, we see we have animals, we have little things, we have these, uh, this is like a Minecraft guy that's like half person, half not. Uh, there we got a horse, we have lots of heads of people, I'm not sure why, why we just have heads hanging out. We have half people, here's a half guy on a cloud. Um, and so here we have this earth, and we recognize that there is a day coming as Christians when this isn't going to be here anymore. That the earth is going to be wiped away, totally wiped away. It's going to dis be dissolved. But we also know that there's going to be a new heavens and a new earth. And Peter here is giving us this promise. Wait for the day and hastens is coming. Because of that day, the heavens will be dissolved and the fire and the elements will melt with heat. But based on his promise, we wait for the new heavens and the new earth where righteousness dwells. So like all of the injustice that we, we are upset about, all of this, the, the craziness with politics, all of the corruption in the government systems all around the world, all of the injustices and the genocides, all of that is going to be dissolved. All of that is going to be judged. And we can look forward to a day when God is going to set everything straight. He's going to come back. Everything's going to be dissolved. Everything's going to be taken care of. He's going to be judged. It's going to all be uh, brought to light. And then there's going to be a new heavens and a new earth with righteousness dwells that's amazing that's exciting that is that is good good news so here we go how do you prepare for that how do you prepare so that uh you know what what is it that you and i can do to make sure that we're ready so that uh you know we've done our part uh so that we're we're ready here for the new heavens and the new earth. This little guy, I think, needs one of these. Pew pew. I don't know why he needs a gun. So anyway, he's ready. He's ready. So it, uh, this is how we get ready for the new heaven and the new earth. This is how we get ready for the day of the coming. Obviously, you steward things as best as you can. But he, he says this in verse 14. Therefore, dear friends, while you wait for these things... Make every effort to be found without spot or blemish in his sight at peace. This is so interesting uh, that he is calling people that the way that you prepare. Uh, yes, it's important to steward what you have. Yes, it's important to pick up the trash. But ultimately, the best way to prepare for global warming is that your heart and my heart are without spot or blemish in his sight, that we are at peace. That's so, that's so crazy to me. That's so interesting because ultimately uh, what, what I think the world wants us to do is get caught up in the reality that, uh, you know, we have to, we have to change emissions and we have to do all these different things. And it, it's, is it a bad thing to do? Not at all. But in the end, what good is it if you've gotten rid of all the straws and you've fixed all the emissions issues and we've all converted to electric vehicles that are, you know, created from uh, non-war zone areas and everything is legit and everything is good. Uh, what good is any of that if your heart still isn't righteous and you still end up also being judged? Uh, that you too are condemned to hell, that like the earth, you will be burned for all of eternity. What good is that? So Peter here is calling us. He's saying, look, come into righteousness, be found without spot or without blemish, meaning that there's nothing, uh, no sin, that you have repented of your sins, that you have been found righteous. Uh, he, he says this, also regard the patience 
of our Lord as salvation. He earlier in this this passage, he's talking about like the day of the coming of the Lord that it's been, you know, some people are going to mock us saying, oh, Jesus isn't really coming back. Uh, and what he's saying here is that uh, the don't think that the patience of God, meaning the delay in his coming, uh, isn't an act of mercy. It's an opportunity for more people to be saved. But yet at the same time, we need to hasten its coming based on verse 12, which the way we do that is by what? By telling people about Jesus. Maybe while we're walking down the street to pray for people, we can also pick up trash, pick up garbage. We can recycle. We can do things that are good and healthy that will help us to take care of the environment around us. Uh, but at the same time, recognizing that if your heart's not pure, if your heart's not clean, if there's spot and wrinkle there, that in the end, it's not going to matter a whole lot. Not, not for you, at least. So let's pray. Jesus, we come before you. And Father, we, we just repent now. Uh, Lord, we, we repent. Some of us, um, we've got lots of spots and wrinkles. And so, Lord, we pray that, that Lord, you would show us those things. The things that we need to repent of. Some of us, Lord, we've we've been lazy. Some of us have we have bitterness in our heart, Lord. Some of us here today, um, we've not been good stewards of of your creation. We've not been good stewards of your earth. Uh, we've not treated things, uh, not just things, but the the animals and and everything that you've created. We've we've not treated it well, uh, and so Lord, we repent of that. Lord, we ask that you would forgive us. Uh, of all of our transgressions, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, today's video is coming to a close. If you haven't done so already, please uh, cl click the subscribe button, uh, click the little bell, and then you can be notified whenever our videos are coming out. Uh, we would love to have you share our videos, help us to grow as many mature disciples as possible. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow um yep dan pastor dan will see you here tomorrow peace out